And welcome back, tankers. This is Mr. Kassarian. We are here in Armored Warfare for a tank basics for the tank basics school. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to walk you through some of the capabilities, features, tips, and tricks of this game. Now, we're going to avoid covering stuff about the UI, about commanders, about that sort of stuff. For right now, we're going to cover simply what you're doing in your tank. How do you tank? All right. And how do you not die while tanking? Now, I want to explain up front that, again, I'm mostly a PvE player. But all of these tips apply to both PvP and PvE to an extent. There's like one or two things that don't apply to PvE yet. But they will eventually, so we're going to cover them just so that we're looking ahead. All right? We're not covering equipment or consumables or commanders or skills. For right now, we are covering armor. All right? Well, specifically, we're covering protection because... And it's not really even protection. It's survivability. In modern tank doctrine, there is survivability, not armor. How survivable is your tank? How likely are you to be killed on the field of battle? And there are multiple ways to accomplish survivability. There's simply not being there. As in not being on the battlefield at all. But usually by the time the tankers are called out, that's not an option anymore. All right. Then there's don't be seen, don't be hit... When you are hit, can you resist the hit? What people think of as armor. And if you are hit, how bad is said hit? Okay? This is a bit of a paraphrase and a bit of a different interpretation, but that basically covers it. So the first thing you need to know about your tank's armor. All right, so let's let's take a look at the T-62 main battle tank. It's a Tier 3, and it is one of the first tanks, and actually it's one of my favorite Tier 3s. Um, it's a Russian MBT. Like all the Russian MBTs in this game, it has pretty darned high alpha. I think it has the highest alpha of its tier, actually. Uh, if we look at the details on it. Yeah, highest alpha of its tier compared to the M60. Highest pen. You know, best... Uh, well, this has been moduled to heck to a hand basket here. Um, I have a lot of upgrades on this tank and, and a decent crew. Um, but yes, alright, so let's keep going. So, the T-62 main battle tank. All right, let's take a look at its protection. So he under here in defense, you can see how many hit points it has, so how much damage you can take. And then you have hall FSR, followed by some numbers and slashes. What does this mean? Front is F, S is sides, R is rear. So this being an MBT, you can see it has pretty good armor for its tier. All right, it has 102 millimeters of armor on the front, 79 armor on the side, and 46 in the back. This is a pretty good uh, determination or example, rather, of what most main battle tanks and how their armor plans are laid out. You have good frontal armor, mediocre side armor, and just don't get hit in the back. All right. Most armor vehicles don't get hit in the back. But you also have your turret armor. Turret FSR. 242, 122, and 55. Well then, that's a lot heavier armor. Yes, it is. All right, so your turret has different armor values from your hull. This is important to remember. You only have 55 millimeters of rear turret armor, all right? It's a lot easier to forget where your turret's pointing when you're shooting at someone. So you may have an enemy over here who has a big, nasty gun, and you're worried about it. Your enemy off to your left, however, does not have a big, nasty gun. So you spin your turret to this guy to take him out. In the meantime, the guy in front of you has slid around behind you. All right, not behind your hull. He's on your, the side of your hull. That's fine. So you go, okay, fine. You keep your aiming at this guy, and you rotate your hull to face. This guy still can't shoot at you for whatever reason. Well, you still have a problem. Your hull's pointing at this guy on your right. You have your heaviest hull armor pointed at him. But you're pointing your weakest turret armor because you're looking to your left, and your major threat is to your right. Just something to keep in mind. Now, let's look at some other info here. We have these hull modifiers. You can see it's 1-1-1 one, one, one across the board. What does that mean? Well, that means that you have one hull modifier versus armor piercing, high explosive, and shape charge ammunition. So when a round hits you of any of these types, it's going to use your armor values as listed. Let's look at a different tank. Let's look at the T-70... No. T-70... 
Yeah, let's take a look at the T-72. I think it has different hull modifiers. Yes. Okay, good. So, the T-72 here. T-72 Ural. And I think some of this is being changed by... No, this doesn't have ERA on it. Okay, good. You can see it's made of layered steel composite. All right. Now, it has heavier armor just straight up than the T-62. Well, it's in main battle tank. Of course it does. And it's a tier 5. It's two tiers higher. Of course it has better armor. But one of the most important things to look at here is these modifiers. So it's using a composite armor system, which is more effective than simple homogenous steel. Or in tanker terms, we call it RHA, Rolled Homogenous Armor. RHA is the semi-mythical um, baseline for armor penetration. And we'll get to that when we talk about ammunition. You can see here, against armor piercing, it has a 1.5 modifier. What does that mean? Well, so if someone hits you in your front hull armor, you take your 220 and you multiply it by 1.5. So actually, he's going to have to punch through 330 millimeters of effective armor. That gets even worse, okay? Because if he hits you with a shape charge round, you can see that 2.5 modifier right here, He's going to have to punch through somewhere around 550 millimeters of armor. I may have messed the math up on that, but I think it's about 550 millimeters. So he has to punch through 550 millimeters of frontal armor to actually get into your tank with a shape charge. That is a huge amount of, damage, of, of penetration that he's going to have to go through. You can see my own heat shell won't pen that at all. I can't get through my own frontal armor with my heat shell. Even though if you just look at the straight numbers, 278 versus 220, I should be able to. But because this is a shape charge round, a heat round, it's not going to punch through that. You can see that I have a different turret composition, which gives me slightly less modifier. But because my actual armor on my hull, on my turret, is actually heavier, it isn't as much of an issue. All right? So, that's, our, that's that information. Let's look at one more thing to do with your uh, protection. Well, two more things. So, let's take a look at our friend here. I can find him. Where is he? Sometime, there we go. The M60A3. It was right next to it. This is the M60A3. Notice all these weird plates all over the tank. All right? Like this stuff. What? It, what is all this? This looks silly. What is it? Well, what this is, is this is Explosive Reactive Armor, or ERA. What ERA does is as a round comes in and as it hits the armor, the armor actually has explosives in it and they blow up. Remember, this is on the armor of a tank. So the actual, an unfocused explosion against the armor of a main battle tank isn't actually going to do a lot of damage. And usually there's some sort of a backer plate that prevents that damage, any damage from occurring to the tank. But what the ERA does is it projects a steel plate forward away from the armor. And when a heat round hits that, it detonates the heat round away from the surface of the hull. The reason you do that is that the way a heat round works is it uses an explosive to basically almost turn a copper liner into, I've heard it described as a plasma, but a jet of, of superheated metal that just cuts and burns its way into the tank. Now, if you detonate it at a distance, so it's on a, it's what's standing off from the tank. For every, I think the number I heard, and this is goes, I have to credit um, Fiora the Tank Girl for this number. Every millimeter of air that that round, that that jet travels through, is equivalent to adding five millimeters of armor to the tank. All right. So ERA adds a huge amount of protective oomph against heat rounds. It actually also does some work, good work against shaped charge, against, uh, excuse me, um, against kinetic rounds as well, because it can sort of deflect them and cause them not to hit exactly where they're supposed to. So if we look at it, the ERA here, yeah, you can see ERA composition, light ERA, okay, offers marginal protection. So you can see ERA front side rear, 15, 15, 0. So it's adding another 15, 15, and 15 millimeters of protection to the front and sides of wherever that ERA is covering. 
Now, the downside of ERA, and this is important, ERA is one use. If you hit one of these panels, that panel blows off. It's gone. Until you get back to base, you don't have it. So you can sort of deplete the ERA of a tank just by shooting at it. And this becomes important. If you're in an MBT and you're getting hammered on by um, an LAV or a scout vehicle, an AFV, some, you know, something like that, like, my, like the Fox or even a... Uh, I don't think I have it. Even an XM800. It's going to strip away that ERA. The ERA doesn't care if that round's tiny. It's still going to strip that ERA away from you. Which leaves you much more vulnerable to another tank or to an anti-tank guided missile. Which brings us to our final point. The anti-tank guided missile. Now, a good example of an ATGM is the round that both the Starship and the Sheridan carry. Which is this baby. This is the upgraded one. The MGM-51C Shillelagh ATGM, also known as This Thing Hurts, okay? Let's take a good look at it. That's not what I wanted to do with you. I wanted to go into your upgrades. The Shillelagh Hurts. You can see it does 459 damage and 528 penetration. This thing hurts hurts okay yeah it's really painful now you're not going to see a lot of them get fired because from sheridans or starships because they have to they're fired out of the main gun and it take the reload times forever 16.73 with reload upgrades but if you look at a vehicle like the glight panzer which has a built-in tow launcher all right so it can fire the tow missile without switching. It switches which weapons it's using, but the tow is mounted externally. It's not part of the gun. This could be a problem for you. This BGM-71B tow missile, 477 and 559, that, that, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Well, to counter that, you have something called APS. The soft kill system. A lot of higher tier tanks have it. The ERC-90 has it at tier 5. I think it's the first tank to get it, actually. And I haven't equipped it. And the reason I haven't equipped it is because it isn't useful yet in PvE. Enemy vehicles don't... Enemy vehicles don't fire um, at you with these... With ATGMs, anti-tank guided missiles, in PvE combat. But what the APS does is, every 60 seconds, it can knock down one guided missile, and it can do that six times. Now... As you can imagine, if you get a like a, um, a tank put a, a platoon together, this can be deadly, because all of these tanks are going to cover each other with their AP anti-missile systems, okay? And they're very common at higher tiers. Um, if we look at MBTs, we look at the does the XM1 get one? Doesn't look like it does, but I'm pretty sure the Abrams doesn't have it either. Interesting. Yep, but the M1A1 gets an APS. Um, so you see APS start to crop up a lot more at higher tiers. All right, so that's something to be mindful of. All right, let's go back to our uh, T72. That's a good tank to look at. Okay. So one other thing to keep in mind is armor slope. All right. Slope is the angle of the armor. You can see on this tank, you have a pretty good slope here. The reason why slope is important is if you if you think of armor as a rectangle, right, and you hit it head on, you're hitting it and you have the short, the thinnest amount of armor to penetrate if you're hitting it at a 90 degree angle. But if you start to turn it backwards, if you tip the top back and you imagine the drawing of that line that goes through the armor, it lengthens as the armor turns to the point where I believe the number I heard was about double the armor thickness for a 45 degree slope. So this T-72, never mind the armor modifier, it has a pretty good slope on that front hull. You know, almost, I'd say almost 45 degrees in that front hull. So let's say for it's 45 degrees, and this armor value is increasing again. So it's 330. Then you add the modifier. That's a ridiculous amount of armor. So one thing to keep in mind, and you can see this as well on the M60A3, the armor underneath this ERA is sloped and bent, all right? 
So if we look at uh, the M60 standard, which has pretty much the same hull design, you can see this this armor is kind of curved, it's rounded, it's sloped. You know, it's it's going to be hard to hit this thing um, in a place that's that's fragile, that isn't sloped. What you want to aim for is if we look at the T64, you want to aim for something that's flat. So you want to hit maybe in here, you know. You want to hit the back here. You know, you want to hit something flat that gives you the best chance for penetrating. Simultaneously, you don't want to hit the armor at an angle like this because now you're not only dealing with one direction of slope, you have a second direction because the tank has his nose turned away from you. And that also applies to the turret, this rounding on the turret. You're never going to really get a good uh, 90 degree hit because the turret's a circle. <laughs> you know, it's you're not going to get that. So keep in mind armor slope, armor modifiers, armor slope, armor modifier, and armor thick all affect armor thickness or effective thickness against whatever round you're firing. Which brings us to know your ammo types. <clears throat> different ammo types are better against different vehicles. So if we look at my M60A4, which I had a minute ago, M60A3. It's a tier three tank, tier five tank. T-72 is also a tier 5 tank. So the heat round. The first round you should know about is your heat round. Your heat round, as I said earlier, uses an explosive to project a jet of molten superheated copper into the tank. That's bad. Your heat round has very good damage and not so great penetration. So the penetration on this round is, five, seven, is 278. Let's look at the M60A3. Well, that's actually probably going to punch through his solid steel frontal armor, even with that ERA on there. Well, except that it's sloped, so it it's going to have a it's going to struggle. You know, it probably will punch through his thick armor, but it's going to struggle to do it. All right. The same thing with the M60 A3. Now, his heat round has about 261, which we saw earlier. 261 that's that's not going to, even without the sloping, that's not going to penetrate the front hull of the T-72. Never mind his turret front armor. It's just, Never mind the armor modifiers. Just with the sloping, that won't penetrate. Yeah. Even if you get a 90 degree shot, the armor, the modifiers will prevent that from penetrating. On the other hand, it does a lot of damage. If you're firing at something like, let's say my M60 was engaging this fox. Well, the fox has no armor. It, it literally, 15, 18, 18, yeah, it has no armor. Um, and it's aluminum, too, so you, you actually have a negative hull modifier. This cuts that armor value almost in half for its effective armor. So, the heat rounds do a lot of damage. Looking at the heat round on my T-72, it does 606 points of damage. That's a big chunk of this fox's health. That's a lot of damage. Wait a second. Huh, he has a lot of HP. I mean, that's almost half the health of my M60. Now, again, it's not going to penetrate everything. And how are you going to fix that? Well, looking at my T72, or let's look at the M60. He has a second round, this blue one. This is Armor-Piercing Fin Stabilized Discarding Sabo, or APFSDS, also known as just Sabo. Sabo is interesting. Um, Sabo actually means shoe in French, I believe. And you have a very thin kinetic penetrator, think of it like an arrow, surrounded by a shoe, or a outer covering, an outer case, kind of, that's much thicker. It actually happens to be the same diameter as the shell barrel. In the case of the M60, that's going to be 105 millimeters. The reason they do that is the amount of energy you can impart to a round is dependent on the diameter of the shell and the length of the barrel. To get a barrel that is not ridiculously long, and you can't just keep lengthening it because of ballistic, internal ballistics reasons, you need to make the shell wider to impart more kinetic energy to it from the gunpowder. Well, from the propellant, we don't really use real gunpowder anymore. When it fires, that shoe, that outer case, falls away, revealing the sabo 
the arrow inside of it, which is very small and very thin. Well, it's very thin and long, so it has very low resistance. It's made of very dense materials, and it's designed to just punch its way through the enemy tank. It does damage because when it hits, it actually starts to splinter as it leaves the inside of the armor. But you can see it has lower damage. This only does 331 damage versus my heat shell is going to do 405. But it has much better pen. You have 261 versus 319. That 319 is not actually quite enough to penetrate the thickest part of this MBT's armor with the modifier and the sloping. But if you hit a weaker spot on the frontal armor, it will go through. All right. Now, I'm going to know some players are just going to go, well, if it's always going to pen, I'm just going to use the Sabo all the time. Well, the thing you have to know is that against lightly armored vehicles, like let's say this Fox, if you hit him with a Sabo, it's actually not going to, there's not enough resistance on his armor to cause that Sabo to fragment and actually do the damage it's designed to do. In other words, it's going to go in one side and right out the other. Um, there's a similar event to this that happened in World War II where Japanese battleships and heavy cruisers were engaging U.S. destroyers, and they were firing armor-piercing high-explosive rounds. They're designed to punch through and they're fused, so once they punch through, they explode inside the ship. Well, the destroyers had no armor. They're destroyers. They literally have no armor, just their hull. They have enough, arm they have enough thickness of metal in their hull to give them structural stability. That's it. So the high-explosive shells failed to detonate, They'd go in one side of the destroyer and keep going and just fly out the other side again. So the same thing will happen with your Sabos if you punch them into a fox. You're going to hit. You're going to do some damage, not a lot. And you're going to get a little message in your screen saying, overpen. Which means you overpenetrated the target. You hit him and it went flying throughout the other side. Didn't do as much damage as it could have. So there's one final type of ammunition. And that's this stuff. Um, high explosive. All right. And let's look at the Starship. Are you, do you use standard HE? Yes, you use standard HE. High explosive is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lot of explosive in a shell casing, and it detonates on impact. Now, you can see it does a monumental amount of damage. 451 to 551. But that's only if it penetrates. And look at its armor penetration value. 22 millimeters. Now, if you hit a fox with this, that's going to penetrate. But if you hit anything else, it isn't. The advantage of it is that if it doesn't penetrate the tank, it'll still do some damage. You can see that damage non-penetrating, 75 to 367. If you don't penetrate with heater Sabo, it's not going to damage the tank. This will always damage a tank. It's also very effective at damaging enemy modules on the tank. And if you actually penetrate with one, it will wreck someone's day. Literally, it will cause hell inside their tank. Everything will be broken. Half their crew is going to be dead. Um, they're going to lose a lot of HP. They may even be destroyed if you set off their ammo rack. This can be devastating. But the advantage is it always does damage. It's usually used by artillery so uh this is my m109 artillery piece you can see here i have 155 he rounds i do a fair amount of damage even on non-penetrating hits 55 to 271 and actually i can penetrate up to 31 meters millimeters of armor which isn't too bad actually high explosive is great if you have an enemy on very low health like two or three points you know maybe 50 points of health and you want to guarantee to kill him Load HE and fire. Other than that, I don't carry a lot of it. And the reason I don't is simply because it isn't that useful. Um, I PVE mostly. There are very few tanks that I cannot figure out a way to penetrate. And we'll get to that later. Probably in episode 2. There are many different types of high explosive. This is standard. Well, this is HERA. Or HERAP. High Explosive Rocket Assisted. Um, HARAP stands for High Explosive Rocket Assisted Projectile. This travels faster. This travels faster than standard high explosive rounds. Great for artillery because less time in the air. The Starship. The Starship carries standard HE. The M60A3 carries high explosive plastic. 
plastic ammunition deals less damage than high explosive, but it has an increased chance to cause damage to internal modules and crew, even when it doesn't penetrate. What it does is that when it hits the armor, the explosive in the tip flattens out and pancakes against the armor and then detonates. And what that does is internally, it causes spalling, where these chips basically break off of the armor at the other, at the opposite end of the armor from where the round hit, and go flying around like shrapnel inside the enemy tank. Not fun. The T-72. It carries a fragmentation round. There are many different types of high explosive. Um, the Fox. It carries armor-piercing special effects. Deals moderate damage. It also carries standard HE and a 30 millimeter. Um, you have high explosive incendiary or HEI, which has an increased chance to set their engine on fire because you really don't like them. You know, so it really depends on what vehicle you're in and how that vehicle, what type of explosive ammunition that vehicle carries. One last thing about ammunition loads, <clears throat> and I think that'll be the end of this part of tank basic school. In PVE, I typically carry mostly heat. We can look at my uh, T-72. Where is it? There we go. A lot of high explosive. have a lot of heat. Some armor piercing. And like two fragmentation high explosive rounds. Most enemies in, in PVE, you can penetrate with heat rounds if you know where to shoot them. Some of them you really just need to switch to Sabo, but you're not going to encounter too many of them. You might also be put low tier in a match, in which case you're going to need every ounce of penetration you can get, load Sabo, and just keep shooting Sabo until you know that you can penetrate something without it. Okay, so that about covers it um, for today. In the next episode, we're going to move on to some basic tactical maneuvers, actually. And we will talk about those. So these videos are actually mostly going to be garage sitters, uh, which I apologize for. But, you know, it, it, it works out. You know, I know you guys also like to see combat, but we'll do some garage sitting for the day. All right, guys, this has been Mr. Xarian. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it informative. If you did, hit the like, subscribe, or comment button. It helps me out. Let's me know you're out there. Let me, let's me know that you want to see more of this and you appreciate what I'm trying to do here. If you didn't enjoy it, let me know why. If you think something could be improved, tell me why. I will be more than happy to take a look and see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching. Good hunting.